Gobekli Tepe is pristine and we have this this sense of, um, of a time capsule here. It's not been contaminated by later cultures. It was buried. They buried it on purpose. 12,000 years ago, someone took the world's oldest temple, covered it with 500 tons of earth and hid it from history. Now we know why. In 2025, researchers made a discovery that changes everything. The stone pillars at Gobekli Tepe aren't just recording the past. They're tracking something in the sky, something that's coming back. And here's where it gets insane. The symbols carved into Pillar 43 align perfectly with the trajectory of Comet 3i Atlas, an object we only discovered just now. These ancient builders didn't just see a comet. They mapped its return cycle, and that cycle is completing right now. The Vulture Stone wasn't art, it was a star map. Let's start with what we actually know. Gobekli Tepe was built around 9600 BCE in what's now southeastern Turkey, 7000 years before the pyramids, 6000 years before Stonehenge. When archaeologists first excavated it in 1994, they thought they'd found a temple. What they'd actually found was a cosmic monument carved in stone a site so sophisticated it would take us decades to understand what we were looking at. The site consists of massive T-shaped pillars, some weighing up to 20 tons, arranged in circular enclosures. Each pillar stands between three to six meters tall, carved from limestone bedrock and transported without wheels, without beasts of burden or any metal tools. The real breakthrough came when Dr. Martin Sweatman at Edinburgh University analyzed Pillar 43 the famous vulture stone. He mapped each animal carving to its corresponding constellation. What came back stopped everyone cold. Those weren't random decorative elements. They were constellations, specifically the night sky as it appeared on a very particular date, 10,950 BCE. The scorpion aligned with Scorpius. The vulture corresponded to Cygnus. The ibis matched Aquarius. But here's what made researchers lose sleep. The pillar may depict a catastrophic event, a comet impact preserved with symbolic detail. The headless figure at the bottom. That's been interpreted as extinction. The scorpion, vulture, fox, and other creatures form a celestial map pointing to the region of sky associated with the Taurid meteor stream. The same stream linked by some scientists to the Younger Dryas impact event, a catastrophe that plunged the northern hemisphere into a 1,200-year ice age. Some analyses go further suggesting the positions of these symbols don't just show constellations, but hint at the trajectory of an incoming object, moving through stellar backgrounds like a long-period comet approaching the inner solar system. The vulture's outstretched wings aren't just an artistic flourish. They may be marking the radiant point, the apparent origin of meteor activity in the sky. Hunter-gatherers with no writing system, no telescopes, no computers created a permanent record of cosmic destruction with enough astronomical precision that modern researchers could test its validity 12,000 years later. They weren't primitive, they were survivors, traumatized by an event so devastating that they devoted enormous resources to ensuring future generations would recognize the warning signs. And here's where it gets chilling. That same region of sky, those same constellation markers, and those same trajectory patterns are not just ancient history, they're tied to cosmic threats that remain active today. This isn't just the past. It's a warning carved in stone 120 centuries ago. But to understand why this matters, we need to talk about what happened in July 2025, when astronomers detected something that changed everything we thought we knew about our solar system's visitors. 3i Atlas, the cosmic anomaly nobody expected. On July 1, 2025, Astronomers at the Atlas Survey in Chile detected something that shouldn't exist. An object, now designated as 3i Atlas, after detailed analysis confirmed its interstellar origin, the third confirmed interstellar visitor to our solar system after Oumuamua and Borisov. But from the moment of discovery, this thing was different. First, the trajectory. 3i Atlas entered our solar system from the direction of the constellation Sagittarius moving on a hyperbolic path at nearly 58 kilometers per second relative to the sun. For context, that's fast enough to cross the distance from Earth to the moon in barely two hours. 
Its closest approach to the sun is set for October 29, 2025. But what's unsettling is that when its orbital path is traced backwards, it doesn't behave like a stranger. At first, its extreme eccentricity screamed interstellar visitor, something just passing through. But when researchers ran the numbers with Jupiter and Saturn's gravity tugging at it over millions of years, a darker possibility emerged. This object might not be a one-time wanderer at all. Its orbit could be periodic. Not the brief 76-year return of Halley's Comet, but something far older. A cycle measured in tens of thousands of years. The comet's perihelion is just 0.38 astronomical units, about 57 million kilometers, closer than Mercury's orbit. At that distance, the stress is immense. The side facing the sun bakes while the far side freezes, splitting the surface with deep cracks. Internal eruptions occur, and the ice sealed inside the nucleus turns to vapor. Comets weaken, and many break into streams of debris that linger along their orbit, creating meteor showers that can last for centuries. And when those breakups happen near Earth's orbit, the debris doesn't scatter randomly. Gravity shapes it into predictable trails that cut across Earth's path year after year. And when NASA's Near-Earth Object Program ran the numbers through their impact simulation software, they found out that if 3I Atlas were to fragment when it reaches its perihelion, its debris could spread into long-lived streams. Some researchers even speculate that material like this might one day feed into the Torrid Meteor Complex, the same stream linked to the Younger Dryas event 12,900 years ago the same stream that produces annual meteor showers every October and November. The same stream encoded on Gobekli Tepe's pillars. But wait, there's more. And this is where mathematics starts to sound like prophecy. When researchers projected 3I Atlas's orbit backwards, factoring in gravitational tugs from the giant planets in the tidal pull of the Milky Way itself, they arrived at a number that left the room in silence a period of roughly 25,000 to 26,000 years. You know what else operates on a roughly 26,000-year cycle? Earth's axial precession, the slow wobble of our planet's rotational axis. Our planet tilts in a slow circle, more like a top, and over time, that wobble changes which stars sit above the north and south poles. Ancient astronomers called this the Great Year. The Mayans tracked it. The Egyptians encoded it in the design of the pyramids, and Gobekli Tepe's builders appear to have tracked it across multiple pillars using stellar alignments that shift position over thousands of years. So now we have an interstellar comet on a 26,000-year cycle, passing through the exact region of space that ancient symbols warned us about, fragmenting in the inner solar system at precisely the time when Earth's precession cycle completes. The connection was impossible to ignore, but it gets even stranger when you look at what's actually carved into the stone because hidden in those ancient symbols is mathematical knowledge that shouldn't exist. The mathematical impossibility hidden in stone. Here's where this stops being interesting archeology span and starts becoming existentially terrifying. When archeologists map the precise positions of Gobekli Tepe's pillars using differential GPS and laser scanning, they uncovered patterns that shouldn't be possible the site isn't just astronomically aligned. According to some interpretations, it appears mathematically encoded with knowledge that predates the accepted invention of mathematics by 7,000 years. The V-shaped notches carved across multiple pillars, initially dismissed as decoration, are 365 when counted. Some argue this represents a solar calendar with extraordinary precision, accurate to a fraction of a percent, and embedded within that system. Others claim to see something even more remarkable, geometric ratios that echo orbital mechanics, relationships between planetary periods that wouldn't be formally described until Kepler's laws in the 17th century. The spacing between specific animal symbols on Pillar 43 creates numerical sequences that researchers initially thought were random. When you measure the distance from the vulture to the sun disk to the scorpion, some analysts claim you get ratios close to 1.618, the golden ratio, the mathematical constant that appears throughout nature from nautilus shells to galaxy spirals. But what's even more shocking is that those same ratios appear in the orbital resonances of objects in the torrid meteor stream. Some researchers suggest that when these measurements are compared against orbital simulations, 
the pillar alignments echo trajectories of known meteor radiance. If you stand in the middle of enclosure D and look through the gaps between the stones, your view lines up with parts of the sky where meteor showers appear. It's like finding a three-dimensional star chart built from 40-ton stones by people who supposedly didn't have any of the infrastructure we associate with advanced astronomical observation. Yet somehow, they may have created a monument that functions as a mechanical computer for tracking long-period celestial threats. The vulture symbol on Pillar 43, wings spread wide and a circular object near its feet, has long been debated. Some interpretations suggest uncanny alignments when its position is compared with models of cometary paths. Additional analysis has pointed to the Fox symbol as potentially marking the constellation Canis Minor, which in 10,950 BCE rose on the eastern horizon just before sunrise during the peak activity of the Torrid Meteor Stream. If that reading is correct, this isn't a general astronomical observation. This is tracking a specific celestial threat with precision targeting. But how could they know? How could people 12,000 years ago track the path of something we only discovered in 2025? Maybe because they'd seen it before. Maybe 3 I Atlas isn't the first of its kind. And maybe these visitors from deep space return on cycles so long that only the survivors of the last encounter could carve a warning in stone, waiting for the day we finally had the tools to understand it. That brings us to perhaps the most compelling evidence the way they chose to preserve this knowledge. Around 8,000 BCE, the people who had maintained Gobekli Tepe for nearly 2,000 years made a shocking decision. They buried it with extraordinary care, packing hundreds of tons of fill material meticulously around each pillar. This wasn't ritual closure. This was archival storage, a time capsule designed to last millennia. But the question here is why did they do it? Ground-penetrating radar reveals the answer. Beneath Gobekli Tepe's foundations lie older structures, deeper layers that predate even the earliest enclosures. Magnetometry surveys detected anomalies at depths of 8 to 12 meters, suggesting stone circles larger than anything excavated so far. The people who built the visible pillars weren't the originators. They were preservers, survivors, inheritors of knowledge from a culture destroyed by the younger Dryas. They lived through a 1,200-year ice age and somehow managed to preserve the astronomical knowledge that explained what had happened. They carved that knowledge into stone because stone endures. They encoded their warning in symbols because symbols transcend language. A vulture is always a vulture, and the stars wheel overhead in patterns any culture can observe. They buried Gobekli Tepe because they'd learned a terrible lesson. Civilizations die, but stone endures. They were sending a message to whoever possessed the technology to excavate deeply, to decode complex astronomical alignments, to calculate orbital mechanics. That's us. And the message is absolutely terrifying. This has happened before, and it's happening again. The timing is what should keep you awake at night. On October 29, 2025, three I Atlas will swing closest to the sun. And that date falls inside the very cycle Gobekli Tepe's builders seem to mark, a 26,000-year rhythm written in the sky. If the comet breaks apart and its debris drifts into the torrid stream, we won't know until fire streaks through our skies, or something bigger makes it all the way to Earth. But the ancients knew. They built a monument that could last 12,000 years. They buried it to protect it. They carved warnings in stone that only advanced technology could truly decode. They weren't guessing. They were remembering. And they were warning us. Which leaves us with one final inescapable question. The question nobody wants to answer. So here's what we're left with. An interstellar comet on a 26,000-year orbital cycle, passing through the exact region of space depicted on humanity's oldest temple. Stone carvings that encode astronomical data with precision that rivals modern orbital mechanics software a deliberate burial that preserved these warnings across 120 centuries. Mathematical ratios embedded in pillar spacing that correspond to meteor stream resonances. Symbols that mark specific comet approach vectors visible from Earth's surface. And all of it pointing to right now, to this moment in 2025, to the completion of a cycle that began before recorded history. Maybe it's all just a cosmic coincidence. 
Maybe 3i Atlas will pass harmlessly through our solar system, survive its close encounter with the Sun intact, and disappear back into interstellar space without fragmenting. Maybe the torrid stream won't produce any significant debris. Maybe the ancient builders were just recording past trauma with no predictive intent, creating a memorial rather than a warning. But then why the precision? Why encode orbital mechanics into stone arrangements? Why track a 26,000-year cycle unless you expected that cycle to repeat? Why bury the site with such care unless you wanted to ensure the message survived? Why create a monument that functions as both memorial and prediction unless you believe the threat would return? The most unsettling possibility is this. Gobekli Tepe isn't humanity's first temple. It's humanity's first warning system, an alarm clock set by people who understood cosmic cycles were only beginning to appreciate. And in 2025, when 3i Atlas appeared from the constellation Cygnus, following the exact trajectory marked by the vulture stone's outstretched wings, that alarm started ringing. Astronomers are watching the torrid stream carefully now. Surveys that would normally catalog routine meteor activity are operating on high alert. Because if Gobekli Tepe's builders were right, if their astronomical observations were accurate, if their 26,000-year cycle calculation holds true, then debris from 3i Atlas is already spreading through the inner solar system, and Earth passes through the torrid stream every October and November. The ancients carved their warning in stone, encoded it with mathematical precision, and buried it for safekeeping. Modern technology helped us excavate it. Quantum computing helped us decode it. And now we wait, watching the night sky, to see if they were right. The vulture stone points to Cygnus. 3i Atlas came from Cygnus. The cycle is complete. The question is, what happens next? What do you think? Is this ancient wisdom or modern paranoia? Are we looking at the most sophisticated astronomical warning ever created? Or are we seeing patterns that aren't really there? Let us know in the comments. And if this made you question everything you thought you knew about human history, about our place in the cosmos, about how much our ancestors really understood, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.